During a recent outing to an Italian restaurant with my hubby, I was struck by their unique round paper placemats. As a passionate junk journal, of course, I was on a mission to keep it spotless, <laughs> envisioning the creative possibilities it held for my journal or planner. So this is it. It's absolutely huge. And what I'm going to do today, you can do with any paper, music sheet, magazine page, printable, any paper you have on hand. Packaging paper would be awesome for this as well. So this is from a pizzeria called Losteria. You can see some of it here, that's their logo. I'm guessing they have this in other countries as well. It's a chain. And I'm so proud of myself that I kept this clean because the pizzas are huge. The pizzas are actually as big as these paper placemats. And they are not family pizza. They are for one person, but they're really, really good. So I want to make an envelope out of this and I want to retain a round shape because I want to remember its original shape and I want it to represent the evening that we had. And so that shape for me personally needs to stay around. But in general, I think it's really fun to make an envelope out of a circle. So this here is too big for my journal, for sure. <laughs> so I need a smaller circle. So I'm turning this around just so that I can see more easily because there's no print on this side. Then I'm going to take a paper plate, a paper plate. I'm going to take a plate and I'm going to trace this. So obviously the bigger your plate, the bigger your envelope is going to be. It would also be fun to use like a small dessert plate and make a small envelope. So I'm just going to trace my plate. And I will cut this out. My hubby offered that he would ask for a new placemat in case I mess mine up. But for me, the point was to upcycle something that would have otherwise been thrown away. And it was not easy keeping this clean because the pizzas are just so big. <laughs> so we have our circle. And now we can still alter the size to what we need. I want mine to fit into my planner. We could still make this wider or more narrow depending on our needs. I want mine fairly big, so I don't want to fold in too much. So I'll just fold in one side and then I'll fold in approximately the same distance from the other side, trying to stay parallel. You could measure it if you are very particular. I am not. And then we need to fold this up. Again, you can decide how much you want to fold it up. And then we flap, uh, we flap. <laughs> we fold our flap down always leaving some space like that so now we just need to adhere the sides so i'm going to unfold these again and i'm just going to use a glue stick because this is very thin paper maybe if your paper is thick then you might want to use a different glue And then you can either glue these sides up just by adding glue here on these two edges or you sew around this, which is what I'm going to do. So I'll take it to my sewing machine and I will sew around the whole thing probably twice. So now I have this and we have this space here to add something into. This is what the back looks like. It's like the easiest envelope ever, isn't it? <laughs> so now I want to add a little bit of gesso on this here because I do want to make it a little more artsy. I obviously don't want to lose all of this, but I can dampen it down a little bit. I'm going to use this cheap white gesso, which is fairly thin. 
if you only have a thick one always water it down a little bit and if you don't have gesso you can just use white paint i'm using this silicone brush you could use a spatula you could just use a regular paint brush i didn't want to have the the paint brush strokes in this case you could use like a card like a credit card type thing and i want this to look messy once it's all dry it also gets this beautiful crinkly sound which is great and i'm actually going to leave the inside as it is i do like the contrast here and before I decorate this any further, I want to think about where I'm going to place this in my journal. So I'm going to put this into my current planner at the end of September here, right in between here. And I want to insert it like this, kind of like as an extra page. This now helps me to see what colors I have on either side of it and also what direction i want to have my envelope in because for example if i was going to add it in like this i might position an embellishment the other way around you know what i mean or if you have a smaller one you could just position it like this so then if you have an embellishment with an image you might want to place it upright like this Next, I want to think about what embellishment I want to add. That will help me determine what colors I might want to add to the envelope. You can obviously use any image you want, maybe from a magazine, from a vintage book, from a printable. There's so many options. I'm going to stick with the kit I have for this month, which is my Autumn Serenity kit. You can find all the links below in case you want to have a look at some of these. And in this kit, I have these oval images. And I think I like this one right here. So I think this would be cute here. This now helps me determine what colors I want to use. Also keeping in mind the colors that I have on the adjacent journaling pages. So to decorate this further, I'm going to use some watercolors. I have a beautiful palette here from Prima Marketing. It's called Pastel Dreams. I love these colors so, so much. So these are all the original colors that come in the palette. And then I also added these colors to the palette myself. These are Van Gogh watercolors because the palette isn't full when you receive it. It actually only comes with this and this row and all of this was empty and these were also not there. And then I added this piece of foam here in the middle because I really don't like it when I use these colors and when you use your brush and they just wiggle around, it drives me crazy. I know I could just tape them from the bottom, but I also wanted to utilize all the space here and I think this makes a really nice palette. So I think I'll stick to this citrus here. The challenge with this color combination is that I don't want it to turn green. <laughs> so I'll add one color and then dry it and then add the other color and hopefully that will work. So I'm going to get it fairly wet because I want some drip action. So let's spray this to make it run. Obviously, if you have spray paints, you can use that. But I just wanted to show that you could also have some really nice effects just using watercolor. So we're just moving it around a bit. And I think I'm good with that. So I'm going to dry this now. The advantage of using watercolor is, of course, that it doesn't stain your fingers and you can easily wash it off. And I really appreciate that. <laughs> okay, so... Definitely needs the blue. I'm just kind of really worried that it will turn green even though this is dry. Let's try a little bit. What a gorgeous blue. 
I think I will be a lot more uh, careful with this. I'm going to dry this before I make anything more wet. So it definitely looks more green than it does in the original. So this is the original color and this is what I have. So it has changed, but it's not so bad. I think this will still work well with this image. So I will very carefully continue this and maybe keep drawing in between. You can also see the difference here, right? When I put it on fresh, it's more blue than it is here. So I won't use too much water either because I think that mixes it with the yellow. You could also, of course, add some varnish in between so that that won't happen. I should have done that. I could actually seal it also with some matte medium. Oh, now it's too late. <laughs> It's definitely very blue green, but I'm just going to go with it. I know for next time I need to seal the first layer. And then of course we need some golden splatters. So I have this gold watercolor here as well on the side. So this is what we have so far. That's the front, that's the back. Back looks a bit crazy. So I think I want to add an image here as well, making sure it's right side up. I'm going to choose an image, of course, from my kit. So these are my collage sheets from the Autumn Serenity kit. And I want to find an image that works size-wise. Ooh, how about this one? That could be really nice. Let me see if I can fussy cut this to fit here. Using smaller scissors for the intricate details it makes it, of course, a lot easier. I am leaving a white border, as you can see. I think that will help for this image to stand out better from that busy background. You could also just tear around it if you like a messy look. That's like the perfect size actually. It looks like it needs something on the bottom here to stand on so that it's not just floating. So I have this cheesecloth that I have dyed with forest moss distress oxide. Maybe I can use this small piece that I already have cut out. Yeah, that just really grounds it. I like it. Maybe even adding some thread to the bottom. Let's try some black thread. Oh yeah, I really like that. That just gives it a lot more contrast. So let me glue that down. So then let's do the front. You see how this flap is opening? That always bugs me. So I need to find a way to close this. Velcro would be an option, but I'm not a fan of Velcro. You could just add a brad or a button here and then tie a string around it, which then goes around to close it. But I'm going to use my magnets. I have these very strong magnets. I will link my Amazon Germany link for you in case you want to look for something like this. So we need one of these to go on the inside here. So this is how tiny they are. So let's check where it needs to be. It needs to be about here, right there. So we need to maybe add some glue to it. Let's mark this because I will not find that again in pencil so that I can erase it later. Then I'll add some glue here. These are so small. And then let's 
glued on right there. And then I'll add a piece of tape on top of that. So that's in there nice and secure. And the top one we can then hide under this embellishment. So let's make sure we get the right side to the right side so that they don't repel. First of all, I'll erase this pencil mark here. Oh, not a good idea when the glue is still wet because that will definitely tear. Don't do that. Wait till it dries. <laughs> let's add the glue here. And it will, yep, it automatically finds its place. So I'm going to add this here. And I also want to add something with a texture underneath. I have this netting from the supermarket. I think this one was either from potatoes or from lemons. They're very nice and soft. I don't even remember whether I dyed this. I might have dyed this with some distress oxides, but I cannot remember. So I'll add some glue stick to the back of my embellishment. And then I'll put the net over it. And then I will cut around it so that we can still see enough of it peeking out from the sides. And I'll also add, hmm, maybe the black thread is a bit much for this side. Let's try it with one of these. Mm, this one goes really well with the blue-green. Need a lot more than that. Yep, that's it. So let's glue that one down. Of course, I forgot now that the back side is white. That's not good. <laughs> I don't want any white showing when I open the envelope. Okay, let's start off by drawing this. Now I'll try to cover this up with some frayed burlap. color is very close to the color of my envelope inside. Yes, this seems to work nicely. Much better. So I want to add it in here like this. I think that looks really cute. And I think it should be enough to attach it just on one side. We'll try that out. And I'm going to use a fabric strip. This is the same fabric that we have on the outside cover by the way if you haven't seen how i made this planner i will link that video for you below as well and i want to add a little bit more color to it by the way this is the typewriter fabric by tim holtz so i'm going to add some fossilized amber distress oxide to it I'm just going to add some directly and then spray some water Again, you could use watercolor or even acrylic paint, although the acrylic paint might get a little bit more stiff. I am happy with that. So I just need to dry that. So once it's dry, we have this. I'm super happy with it. And I'm going to apply some glue onto it. This is thinned down textile glue. As always, you can also use PVA glue. You could, of course, also just use masking tape or some nice decorative washi tape. I just like the extra texture. Then I'll make sure this is right in the crease. Press this down. I add a little bit more glue where needed. 
and let it dry. So let's see if one strip on one side is enough. Yeah, I think it's actually okay. Looks fine from this side as well, and it doesn't seem to be moving. So, yep, one side is enough. I'm not sure if it would be enough if I use washi tape. I would probably tape it from this side as well. Or you could do one side with the fabric and one side with washi tape. There are so many possibilities. So now we have this magnetic pocket. So I definitely want to add some journaling in here. So these are my options. If I want to use something from my kit, I think these tags are going to kind of get lost in here. So I won't be using those. And I have these larger tags, which are probably just, yeah, they're just a bit too tall, but I could of course always cut this off. Then they would easily fit. I think it's the same with this one. Yeah, I would have to cut this off, which is no problem. I could punch a hole here and just add my own ribbon through it. Or maybe it's better to just use one of these journaling cards. They seem to have a pretty good size for my envelope. So what do I want? Do I want... Hmm. No, I think I want an image on it. I could obviously add my own image to this, but I want something quick. How about these? These are really cute. So I'll just ink up these edges and then I'll add some private journaling on the back. Or maybe before I add my journaling, because this is just so blank, <laughs> let's add some color to that as well. So I'll spray it with water first. This is 200 GSM cardstock. And then I'll use the same blue. This cardstock is super absorbent, so this might not work at all. Yep, I should have coated this with either clear gesso or with matte medium or matte gel or something like this. This soaked in way too quickly. Oh, and it even went through onto the other side. I need to dry this again. So it's dry. It warped a little bit, but that will be okay. I'm going to use this matte medium by Liquitex. It's a very smooth consistency. So it's dry and now we should see a difference when we add this. This is not going to soak in. I can already feel the texture is different when I add it with the brush. Yeah, and look how well it spreads now. What a huge difference. So that's a much more interesting background to journal on. And I'm also thinking, why not just make this into a tag? So I'll add a hole on top here. These fun punches are called ID tag punches, and you can find these on Amazon. And then I can just add this cute blue fabric here in the slot. Let's fray the ends a little bit. And then I can use some twine to tie around that. So I added my private journaling and this can now live in here. And it will stay closed because of the magnet. Have fun with this idea. And feel free to tag me on social media if you post your own version of this. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.